Hi there folks, my name's NovaWing24 and welcome to another little review of an FSX product. So today we're going to be having a look at uh, the Aircraft Factory's latest release, the P51H. So uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much to the guys over at Flight Sim Store. We get uh, a very loud rendition of the uh, Merlin engine there. Uh, thank you very much to the guys over at Flight Sim Store for supplying the review copy of this fantastic little aircraft. Uh, so Aircraft Factory, for those who don't know, Aircraft Factory is the I I I hate to say use the line budget line of their products because. It's really not, like, it's still a great quality product. Uh, but, you know what, uh, Aircraft Factory stuff is a yeah, it is cheaper. Uh, misses some of their, um, like, some of the AccuFuel, AccuFuel, AccuSim stuff. But it's still an amazingly high-quality product and is just absolutely amazing, as we are about to see in this uh, rendition of the P51H. So, uh, as usual, folks, we're going to do our usual format. Uh, the one, because, you know, it, it, well, it, you know what, it works for me, and nobody's really complained about it, so I'm going to keep doing it for now. Uh, so, uh, we're going to have a look around the exterior, then we're going to have a look in the office before we go for a flight around the uh, airfield here and see how she handles. Alrighty, so first off, as you can see, we've got some amazing textures here. Uh, so, the livery options are fairly limited uh, for this uh, P51H. Now that's mainly because um, although it was the final production model uh, and it uh, was produced 1944 and 1945, it never actually saw frontline service. Wait, okay, let, let me rephrase. It saw frontline service but it never saw combat. So the P51H was the final derivative of the P51 um, from the North American stables. Of course, you know, it went on to be the Cavalier afterwards, but from uh, North American stables, this was the final derivative uh, of it, and it was brought in, uh, came in, uh, was deployed for frontline squadrons before the end of the Second World War, but uh, never served in combat. And then uh, due to its... Um, unique nature and some of the uh, design features which we'll go into uh, a little bit later on. Uh, it was uh, relegated unfortunately to second line units and uh, never saw combat even though it was available in numbers for the Korean conflicts and other flashpoints post-war. So it saw it had a home and uh, spent a lot of its time in various Air National Guard uh, squadrons uh, including the one that we're looking at here. So this is for the Texas Air National Guard. Now, as I said, uh, the textures are quite nice. We're going to go for a nice dawn flight here. Um, the sil silver's always really hard to do um, and to get the refle reflectivity right, but you know what? I think uh, this one's been done pretty well. Now, I'm probably going to say the first things that we're going to have a look at, so we're all very familiar with P51. P51 is probably the most um, iconic, um, or one of definitely one of the most iconic aircraft from the Second World War. Uh, but I do want to say a couple of things. When you first look at it, though, it it it's almost like it doesn't quite look like it's a P51. It, it looks, you know, just something's a bit odd. And it's not until you, you know, okay, so, well, well okay, let's just one back here. Let's have a look here. So, first up, it's longer. It is significantly longer. Um, it's about, well, I think it's about four, four or five feet longer. Um, so for a grand uh, total of about 33 uh, and a half feet in length. Um, but it keeps the same wingspan uh, that the P-51D did, uh, but it's got this taller tail uh, for improved stability. Uh, though that wasn't on the initial the initial production, it was uh, introduced uh, as the production line went on. But probably the, the one thing, so that's a, pretty usually the one main thing that people notice on the ground, but in the air, the other thing that people really notice about it is uh, the wing shape. So it has a straight leading edge. Now the P51 is almost um, synonymous and iconic for its uh, kinked leading edge for its wings in its design. But no, the P51H in the final model here had a straight leading edge for its uh, laminar flow design. So very interesting. And as I said, it, it's it's one of those things you know it's a Mustang, but at the same time doesn't look like a Mustang kind of thing. Like, yeah, I, 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 I like it. I, I like it. I like it. And I like how it's a little bit quirky and a little bit different. So, yeah, it, it appeals to my nature how I like the quirky things of aviation. So, there you go. All right, so now that we've uh, had me waffle on and look at the inside of the exterior for a bit, let us uh, jump into the office. All right, so... Now, pretty uh, simple, pretty basic setup, as uh, we come to expect from various uh, 
fighters of the era. So let's uh, first off let's have a look uh, down here. So we've got uh, very beautifully nice detailed and you know, painstakingly done textures in the cockpit as well. Um, by the way, these trim things are very, very important um, for handling the aircraft. So the the, the Mustang uh, was is, you know very famously designed. You know, called the fact you know, it's beautiful handling in the air, but you know she can uh, trim trip up pilots who are who do not treat her with respect and uh, and treat her right on the ground. So yeah, and 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 you know what the aircraft factory rendition of the P-51 really, really does get that, which is always nice to see. And we've also got our other panel over here, and uh, we've got a thing. Alright, so what we might do is we might uh, wind the uh, canopy closed. There we go. And we'll start for our taxi, and then we will uh, depart onwards for our quick little test flight. Alright. We're just about ready. Take off the parking brakes. Uh, crack the throttles a bit. Now uh, I've uh, chosen. It's, it is a default airport we're at, uh, but yeah, I figured uh, we're in Texas. Uh, we're in Texas Air National Guard colours, so it probably be, wouldn't be a bad idea to to fly in uh, in the uh, the great state of Texas. So as we uh, taxi down to uh, departure runway, I'll, uh, I'll waffle a bit more about the history. So as I said, P-51H was the uh, final uh, production variant of the P-51 uh, from the North American stables. Now, interesting enough, uh, it, uh, it fulfilled a, uh, a, a, a production requirement and was uh, ordered by the uh, US uh, Army Air Corps in 1944. It went from um, initial sort of proposal through to uh, confirmed production run between April and June, and then production started there and uh, produced uh, over 200 airframes were produced um, of the H model of the uh, its three different uh, versions of it. However, its actual design, initial uh, designs and thoughts, actually started back in 1943. So, with uh, the P51D being ordered and, and, and the success of that, um, a couple of the designers were sort of a bit curious why. British fighters were always, you know, could always, you know, almost always outperform, and maybe not good so much to do the range thing, but they could definitely, definitely outperform when it comes to uh, light weight and speed and manoeuvrability. So the, couple of the, the North American designers went over to the UK and sort of just investigated a little bit more and just went, you know, what's what's going on here, guys? What's what's going on? And uh, they found out that essentially what it is is that uh, British aircraft are done to a very much a, a more of a light weight specification. Uh, so they shave weight off where possible. They don't um, put you know giant hunks of metal things, and and it, just the design is always designed to save weight, which allowed you know for sometimes you know smaller player plants and but more efficient fighter aircraft. Uh, of course, the most uh, iconic and most known example, of course, being the Supermarine Spitfire. So I'm well, taking this design philosophy. Uh, not very good engineers sort of, but literally sort of said you know. How much does it weigh, and how do you how do you keep the weight down so much? So they actually got the, some of the supreme engineers to literally grab their get their hands on any parts for the Spitfire they could find, and actually weigh them to actually sort of find out where is all the weight savings going. So using uh, and finding more information than some of the things that there were upcoming models of the uh, the Merlin that were coming going to be available shortly. They took all this information and they uh, took it back to the US and they uh, started off uh, working the design to make a lightweight and a faster version of the Mustang. And this led to the development of three different prototypes. There was the uh, XP-51F, XP-51G and the J. So uh, they sort of investigated, you know, how can we make a, a P-51 more efficient, more agile and sort of, you know, more... Um, just you know, just more powerful than it already was, but while still maintaining its uh, combat abilities, but at the same time, sort of still looking at things. Oh, uh, oh, almost went nose over there. That's the problem when you're sort of you know waffling on and drawing and not always paying attention to what you're doing. All right, let's try that again. Okay. Nice thing you got a little you know break break skid on there. Uh, so anyway, so we got this through, and they got all the uh, information through there, and they actually sort of started on. To experiment with ways to make the P-51 you know, faster and more agile and land lighter, while still preserving its range and all the things that made a P-51 a P-51. 
in the end, uh, it was uh, the uh, F model was the X fifty one F was used as the base for the X for the P fifty one H. Uh, where they uh, saved um, basically shaving weight of everything they could to save 600 pounds off the uh, the dry weight of the aircraft, um, which you know translates to uh, you know obviously better performance the altitude and things like that. They used new composite materials and things like that to actually you know give it a even better you know weight saving and, and things like yeah you know, the laminar flow you know was improved across the wing and changing the wing design and stuff like that. So just making it a, just an, an, a, a better version of the P51. Alright, so I'm going to stop waffling for a second while we uh, spin up and while we take off. Okay. Oh, watch out for that tail kick. Oh, beautiful sound of that Merlin engine. And there we go into the air. Oh. Merlin's just sound amazing. No matter what aircraft they're in, Merlin's just sound amazing. And and the guys at the aircraft factory did get a sound set based on, you know, real P fifty ones, so yeah, you, you really get that feeling of uh and that sound that that sort of spine sort of tingle that you get when you sort of got into a P-51 going on. Alright, that one. Alright, now we're going to wind back the uh, prop RPMs a bit so we don't uh, overcook the engines. You see she's very, she climbs beautifully. Very, very quick, is it? She preserves all the things that, uh, that made a P-51 a P-51. You really feel, you know, it, it and it, the characteristics of this is just modeled really well. Like you can feel, you know, she just wants to go fast. She really does just want to go fast, and you can really feel that. Just uh, do a nice bank here. Yeah, she just feels like she wants to go fast, and ah, oh, just looks amazing. Just feels amazing as well. I was saying, yeah. So uh, what was I saying? I was saying something, something, something important about the aircraft, wasn't I? Uh, yeah. So yeah, they've um, just cut down all the weight and everything, and they've what was the production. Oh, sorry. It's just, you know what? It's just amazing. Like I have to look. As I said, this is why I hate saying, you know, and people saying that, you know, aircraft factory is A2A's budget line because. You know, it's such a you know, budget sort of sense to sort of say, oh, well, the quality is not going to be as good. I, I'm sorry, no, the quality is absolutely freaking outstanding. It really is. Like, the, the work that goes into this, like, you, you get the feeling, like, you can feel the torque of the engine just pulling on the aircraft. And, and that's just, like, that's cool. Like, it, it's that kind of stuff that really sets you know, developers apart. And it's why A2A is such a, an outstanding developer. So, yeah, just because it's got, yeah, it, it's the you know A2A called the budget range. It's like yeah, you know what? It's not a, but it's not a budget product. It, it is a fantastic, excellent quality product. It really is. Oh, absolutely loving this. Anyway, so just uh, orbiting the airfield here while I waffle on some more. So the aircraft, as I said, yeah, it's um, it's you know produced and, and uh, a lot, a lot of light weight. What things to change the weight and stuff like that. Now, ironically, the um, the thing that would actually prove to be its uh, downfall in terms of combat operations was its um, its design because it was made of you know all these you know sort of you know different newer materials and and you know. Is, you know the short landing gear stuff like that, and things. The fact that you know it, it was designed with the idea of you know keeping, you know doing the speed thing, and because the P-51D was so much more prolific um, because of its um, service in the Second World War, it meant that post-war, although this was you know the fastest Mustang that produced, the most powerful Mustang produced, it meant that 
because it had a critical shortage of spares um, that they essentially would would not be used for frontline roles, and it would mean that you know they they wouldn't see combat. And so you know this, this amazing fighter that was produced you know from from the stable of um, this, uh, the iconic you know Second World War fighter. You know it's, it got it got its you know time of the sun, but it didn't get its time in uh, to prove itself in combat, which is it's almost a shame. It, it is almost it is almost a shame that it actually sort of you know misses its chance to actually sort of prove itself in Korea, and that's why the and because of that sort of sh spares. Um, Argument is why it was chosen that the P-51D would instead serve in the frontline combat roles, whereas P-51H would continue doing support and Air National Guard roles and things like that. Alright, I couldn't resist. I had to do that. Ah, this is just so amazing. Sadly, though, uh, very few of the uh, P-51Hs survive. In fact, only uh, four. Um, survived, uh, survived to this day. Uh, two airworthy and uh, two uh, simply uh, for display pieces. She just goes so fast. How she didn't become more of a racer uh, post war, I don't know. Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, this is an amazing, this, this is incredible, seriously. This is absolutely incredible. It, if you haven't already been convinced to get this add-on, I just, I don't know how else to convince you. This is incredible. This is an amazing add-on, it really is. It may, it, it, because it is that sort of slightly quirky as well, then, you know, it is that, you know, the lesser-known cousin um, of the P-51, you know, the, the, le the late brother of sort of, you know, late party kind of thing. It's, oh, it's just amazing. This is so cool. Really well, really well done. I, I cannot, you know, say congratulations to the guys at uh, A2A any more than I can now because this is absolutely amazing. Really well done, guys. Oh, hmm. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, I'm going to come in for uh, approach and, and try and land uh, this beast. This is where, where she can get a little finicky. Uh, so we're going to do our uh, downwind leg here. We're doing a right base into uh, landing. Ah, oh, just feels so. This just yeah, it's it, it's got oh, it's got the little behaviours and the little creaks and. So it may not be uh, AccuFuel and uh, AccuSim that kind of stuff that uh, the A2A's Premier line have, but I tell you what, this still has got an incredible amount of detail has gone into this aircraft. It really, really has. Oh. Quite a few uh, redesign features came into the... Um, P-51H as well, so uh, not only is it uh, longer and the taller tail, but uh, the chin scoop for the engine is also smaller, and uh, yeah, a few performance features were made as well, like moving the uh, oil cooler from the uh, the belly uh, intake into uh, up actually up near next to the engine, so actually makes, you know, again, it's it's the little, it was the little space-saving things that actually uh, really helped uh, with this aircraft and, you know, bring it to what it, uh, what it had potential to become. Alright. Alright, bring our gear down. Alright. Nose heavy, that's alright. This is where she gets a little tricky. Coming in a bit high. Oh, 
Oop. Bounce that a little bit. Alright. Let her uh, taxi out. Because if you apply the brakes too hard, you will nose over in this thing, as you uh, almost saw me do before. Ah. Oh. Absolutely amazing. Oh, it, seriously, I've got goosebumps right now. This is just incredible work. A2A Aircraft Factory, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit that you have released. You know what, guys, congratulations. The the detail, the attention to detail for this, um, for something that you, you call budget range, you outperform so many other payware manufacturers, it is not funny. So, absolutely well done, guys. This is absolutely incredible. Thank you for releasing this. This is awesome. Um, all right. Do I? Okay. Okay. Let's let's uh, let's let, okay. Let's 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 wrap this up. All right. If I haven't convinced you to get this already, um, I don't know how else to convince you. I really, really don't because. This is absolutely spectacular. It really is. It is an amazingly well done aircraft. It looks incredible. It flies and handles just amazing. A r great tribute to this pen the uh, ultimate, the final version of the P-51. Really well done, guys. I cannot thank you enough. You are awesome. This is amazing. Thank you to FlightSimStore.com uh, for the, providing the review copy of this aircraft. Um, I am going to be flying this so much, I think. It is just absolutely outstanding. Uh, don't forget to head over to there to pick up your copy, uh, whatever, you, uh, whatever if you haven't already clicked on the link. Uh, make sure you go over there right now to get it, because this is amazing. You are not going to regret getting this aircraft. You really aren't. Um, all right, cool. Uh, end of review. I'm going to go fly this some more, I think. And um, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And as always, don't forget that you can catch up with me on all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Safe skies to all. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.